This program contains adult content. Is there a God? A uh, big atheist. Really? What, am I an idiot? Come on. But yes, it would be nice if you could throw your sins and your responsibilities on someone else. Well, but it's not true. It looks like far left lunacy. I don't believe that it's true. That religion is moral or ethical. You don't need to follow anybody. It's not human intelligence. If someone doesn't value logical consistency, what logical argument are you going to give them that will demonstrate that they should? Hello and welcome to the Godless Revolution. Today is Monday, August 10th. This is episode 300. 300! 300! <laughs> I'm Dan Ellis. Uh, this is Ryan Duffy. Well, hello, Mr. Duffy. How are you? I'm fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic that you're fantastic. It makes me feel fantastic. Well, it's just a fantastic day. It is very lovely outside, I must say. It is. Nice and I was, sunny. Uh, I was making kazoos before we came down to record. Kazoos? Kazoos. What you making kazoos for? For my niece and nephew. Oh. And uh, we learned Lulu does not like kazoos. <laughs> How do you make a wooden kazoo? Like, what do you what 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 makes the noise in the kazoo? So it's actually a piece of wax paper that makes the noise in it. Uh huh. For the resonator. Uh huh. But it's a uh, so I take one piece of wood that's like you know the length the the main body of the kazoo. Drill a hole all the way through it. Then closer to one of the ends, I drill a hole down to meet that hole. Then I take a Forstner bit and make that hole just a little wider. Just going just a little bit. So it's got like a little gap right there. And then there's a top piece that goes onto it. And you do the same thing with that. You drill a hole all the way. Well, I didn't go all the way through. There's, I made my own thing for it. But I kind of drilled in towards each other uh, with a Forstner bit kind of carving out. And I drilled a bunch of little holes for the air to flow through. Uh, and that gets pinched onto the top. It's a piece of wax paper between it. And those two holes match up going up in the vertical ones. And you blow into it, the wax paper vibrates, and it goes kazoo. Mm. You're, I, you're, you're talking all about holes and gaps and stuff, and it made me think about oh, yeah. Cardi B's new video. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, I haven't seen it, but I was listening to another podcast on the way home from work this morning uh -huh. where they're like, uh, I guess she uses an acronym in it and they're like, oh yeah, that means this. Wow. Like, what? Cardi B thinking about what? Vagina? <laughs> yeah, so, so the, the name of the song and video is WAP. It's an initialism. Yeah, wet ass pussy. Yeah. Well, and, and so the, the cleaned up version that they made the uh, video for and is available on YouTube is wet and gushy. <laughs> but, how, how, how is that better? But that's, but, and, and, you know, uh, what, that would be wag, not whack. Wag, yeah. <laughs> but how is that any better? I, I, well, apparently you can't say pussy on the radio for some, whatever reason. Uh, well, I understand that, but <laughs> you can say wet and gushy. Well, I, I I comprehend that it's a thing that is discouraged, you know, that you can't say pussy on the radio, but it seems silly to me. We've talked about it before that, you know, like, it seems cussing. weird to me that people get so upset by sounds that other people make with their mouths. Like, it's it's yeah. a word. It's not going to kill like, you. But when people say frick instead of fuck. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You're intending to say that word. Yeah, exactly. Like they, they That's mean the same thing. Like you, you have the same sentiment going into that word. You're just changing how it sounds. So yeah. what the fuck is the difference? If I say frick, fudge, flip, fetch, like the, there, you, there is you mean none. the same thing basically. So yeah, Mormons, we get all kinds of F words. I think I just went through them all flip, fetch, fudge, fart, yep. Fiddlesticks. <laughs> is Frack one? Frack. So that was, uh, That's in Battlestar that was, Galactica, uh, isn't it? Yeah, Battlestar Galactica was Frack. But uh -huh. I was always told Battlestar Galactica was basically based on the Book of Mormon. Like <laughs> sort a sci-fi version of the Book of Mormon. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because they're looking for Kolob. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, they're but looking I for... I think, I think in the show it's called Kobol. Yeah. 
but it's the same thing. They just changed the location of the L and the B in the word. But yeah, it's based on Mormon doctrine, sort of loosely. I, mean, I always, I always liked the show. Yeah, uh, that one chick was badass in it. Uh, what? what was her name? Starbuck. Yeah. Yeah, Katie, Katie something, Katie something, did Katie. She, Fuck, and she seems like she's probably a, like everything I've seen of her. I mean, she still portrays, but she's a pretty badass person in real life too. Oh yeah, she seems very cool. Katie Heck Heck, what? God damn it! Now I'm gonna have to look up her name. Uh, <laughs> Starbuck, Battlestar Galactica. Kara Thrace is the fictional char- is the fictional character. <laughs> Katie Sackhoff, that's what it is. Okay. That's her name. Yeah, I like her. She's cute. She's in she's in things. Have have you watched uh shit, what is the name of that? Longmire. Did you ever watch <laughs> not Schlongmeyer, it's just Longmire. <laughs> <Jesus, Dan. laughs> it's not Schlongmire, it's just Longmire. <laughs> Did you ever watch that show? No. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's a, it's a Western-ish kind of show, which reminds me, we've been watching Yellowstone. I'm just on a, I'm in a weird mood. We're on a bit of a tangent here. Um, I've, uh, oh, go ahead. I've still never watched Yellowstone. I was going to say, we've, we've been, we started watching that. We're, I think like through episode eight of the first season, it's like, it's like a cowboy mafia drama soap opera show. That's kind of what I've heard a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty brutal, but it's it's I, I don't I am it's okay so far. I don't know. I'm having a hard time deciding if I like it or not because I don't know. I have I have a I have a long and storied history of not being a fan of cowboys and cowboy music and. Stuff like uh, that. Yeah. Here in Utah, they're generally the conservative fuckheads. I don't like cowboy music either. Yeah. I have I have a general, like, if I am not, like, if I just have a disgust for a certain kind of person, it, it just might sound bad. But they're ones with southern accents. Mm-hmm. Like, I automatically start judging them. Oh, yeah. I think- Like, I know I shouldn't, but I'm like... You sound, I don't know, you're going to sound bad, but I'm like, you sound like you fuck your cousin. <laughs> I think that's kind of a universal feeling Thought. for 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 people who have accent, and, who have Southern accents. And we know people with Southern accents that are very lovely people and don't have carnal relations with their cousins. <laughs> but I'm sorry. That's the first thing that pops in my head when I hear someone with a deep Southern accent. And that's why it was bad spending time in Texas. Cause I just thought everyone was, yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. I, but. it's, I, it's something that I try not to do, but it, it is just kind of a, like, it's an instinctual reaction almost that when I hear somebody with a Southern accent, I automatically start you know, putting them in this box of somebody who's, you know, conservative, religious, bigoted, probably not that bright, Republican, like all of these negative stereotypes just because of their accent. And I know that's unfair because I, I have, I've met a ton of people. Yeah. I've met a ton of people that come from the South and have a Southern accent and they're fucking awesome people, amazing people. And I don't know. I think it's it's just that it's the stereotypical hazy, dumb fuck, backwater, shit stain asshole it, that is just for me. It's, it's a bully, right? It's the twangy, yeah, it's the twangy southern accent that I just can't. Like, it may sound petty, but I couldn't date someone with a accent like that because I'm like, I just find it annoying. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if it was Australian or British, I would be in love with you. <laughs> you could be a terrible person to have an Australian or British accent and everybody loves and you. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, sorry, I just love that. I, I love listening to you speak. Everybody thinks you're more intelligent. Yeah. Well, not even that, just the Australians 
have a much better grasp on cussing than we do. Oh, they're I'm like, I'm amazed. Yeah. And they're very creative with their cuss words. And I can just listen to it for hours. Yeah. I'm always, I'm always thoroughly impressed at the creativity and I don't know, gusto with which they, they use their, their curse words. Their, their unabashful cussing. Oh yeah. Like there's absolutely no shame in it at all. It's, it's just like, yeah, I called, I called you a cunt. What do you like? What I called you a cunt. So fucking what? Yeah. Stop being a cunt about it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Uh, This is a great way to kick off episode 300. (laughs) What, what else have you been doing besides making kazoos? Uh, well, I got that mystery box I'm making with a full bottom in it. Oh, right. Yeah. That should be fun. Yeah. Uh, then, you know, I was working this week and we had to do a bunch of live fires on Saturday, which tried not to be as bad as it could have been. We got them all done before uh, about nine thirty, ten in the morning. You did a bunch so of wasn't. live fires. What does that mean? Like we have a structure that we start fires inside of. Oh. Loaded up with, load pallets in and start fires. Oh. We had some people that had to get signed off that were, we started, we were doing a class. Mm-hmm. For people to get their firefighter one and firefighter two certifications from off base or people that worked on base that aren't firefighters. Mm. But COVID threw it all into a tailspin. Like it was supposed to have been done four months ago. We're supposed to have finished this class in March. Mm. But due to COVID, they couldn't do their final tests because the instructors are like, nope, it was all canceled. So we had got the, the uh, people that are sign off and do their final evaluation came out this last weekend to evaluate them on live fire exercises. So I made the mistake of thinking, well, if I volunteer now to go do, uh, to start the fires and control the burn room, I won't have to do it later on. Well, I ended up staying in there for the whole time. (laughs) I'll be smart and get it out of the way. And then nobody will know. And then they're like, they're like, well, there's only two classes left. So why don't you guys just stay in there? Like, okay. (laughs) <laughs> oh do i have to damn it so it's pretty much just spending an hour in a 500 degree box yeah well that sounds Which, like a terrific time yeah it's fun <laughs> uh, get used to it <laughs> yeah uh so we didn't we were supposed to record on thursday and we didn't because i just i got i got stuck at work like i well i didn't golf last week or the week before because work has been nuts and because my arm is killing me. Like I still can't straighten my right arm. My, my tennis and golf elbow is you're, you're doing the woodworking wrong (laughs) is I think it's from digging all of the fucking trenches for the Uh, sprinklers more than anything else that there you do have to use a lot more muscle. Yeah. That I think it was that and using the, the circular saw. Cutting the stringers. That, See, but you're not supposed to, you're supposed to let the saw do the work. Well, yeah, but it's a, I got the big. But carrying it around and picking it up, they're kind of. Yeah, well, well, like I said, I, when I went to get it, Lowe's had two saws available. And okay. the saw I got is very nice, but it's also pretty heavy. And Yeah, I think I have the skill saw. I think weighs like 13 pounds. Yeah, yeah, and it, I went with the skill saw. And we probably have the same one. It's very, very nice. I like it very much. I got the magnesium yeah. shoe. I can't remember. I don't think I had, I don't remember what, what mine has. Cause I don't know if I had it, what there's an option for between two of them. Mine might be a little bit lighter than yours. Cause it's, it's the mag shoe instead of the steel. Anyway, it's yeah. My arm is fucking killing me and the club championship is coming up this week. So Ooh. tomorrow is Tuesday. It's the regular you know, weekly men's league thing and club championship is running Friday and Saturday. It's two 18 hole rounds. And I don't know if I can even play because my arm hurts so (laughs) fucking much. So I plan to go golfing tomorrow. I'll sign up for just nine holes initially to see if I can even complete the nine holes and hopefully it will go okay. And I can play and then we'll play in the club championship. But if not, like I, I would much rather, you know, go tomorrow, sign up to play nine holes and have to not complete it and then miss out on the men's on the, on the 
club championship this week than, you know, skipping tomorrow and then going and paying for two 18 hole rounds and cart and tournament fees and everything yeah. and then figure out that my arm hurts too bad to play. So yeah, we'll have to see how tomorrow goes. This is, this is the one time when you need an AR 15 when I need one. Yeah. They make a golf ball shooting attachment for them. <laughs> they make so an pretty attachment. much a big, a big tube that you thread onto the end of the barrel. Mm-hmm. You use blank rounds, mm-hmm. so you put a golf ball in the tube, uh-huh. and you put a blank in the in the rifle, uh-huh. and you discharge the blank round, and the pressure launches the golf ball. Well, that would be fun. Yeah, it could be. I think go out firing golf balls gotta, all over. Like it would be a thing that you'd probably buy and use it once. And be like that was cool, <laughs> and then never do again. <laughs> no, that would be a lot of fun. But yeah, work has just been extra nuts. You know, I, I, it's just this, I sent a message to a a friend earlier this week that it's, you know, I've just been super busy. Haven't even been on social media a whole lot earlier in the week or the, toward the end of last week, just because it's been so incredibly busy, you know, between, um, the extended tax filing deadline, finishing yeah. and so we're doing those gearing up for the next tax season because we need to get going on that uh upgrades that that's we had kinda, to push that's off kind of what i figured was going on with you with all that stuff yeah well and then it's you know all of the upgrades that we had to push off because ordinarily those are done when it's not tax filing season so you know that delay from april 15th to july 15th really fucking delayed everything. So trying to get all of those upgrades pushed through and completed and tested and in place and then f- gearing up for the next tax season, the fiscal year is ending. Oh. So we've got a bunch of stuff that we need to do. It's just, it's been a lot. So if, if Trump gets to pay with a little moratorium on payroll taxes, how much does that affect, affect you? Oh, fair amount. Um, my, it, it affects my branch a fair amount because we handle all of the infrastructure. So all of the servers and programs on them and stuff like that. Um, Yeah. And transferring data back and forth and verifying data between different government agencies, you know, between social security and the IRS and people, what they're reporting and all of that kind of stuff. So, Um, yeah, it's, it's the, the postponing of the, of the tax filing deadline really caused a lot of problems. And then aside from that, now we're, you know, also trying to figure out what we need to do for any other stimulus that comes around. And basically we know that there's going to be some kind of something or other. It's just a question of trying to make sure our systems are ready to handle whatever we need to do. And so you're, you're, you're getting ready and gearing up and shooting for not even a moving target. It's a target that's not even there yet. You're trying to anticipate where it's going to be. So it's just been a lot, just a lot, a lot of work. It's interesting times. Yeah. And then we had this week, we've got our quarterly management meeting stuff going on. So it's just like meetings scheduled for half of the day every day on top of all of the other meetings and other stuff that we're doing. So it's just yeah. a lot, man. I, I had to like this morning, I knew that we were going to be having these management meetings, but it was that the location was to be determined. And like, then, isn't it like online? Well, yeah, but, we are limited in the amount of things that we can do online. And because of that, we have to do some things uh, on our own personal stuff. Sometimes if we want to have better communication, it's, it's all fucky. Yeah. It's all really fucky. Um, But we have, this is our 300th episode. So I'm excited. We have some questions that were sent in by, our dear listeners and fan base, and we will get to answering those right after this little break. I'm Bryce Barkenagel. 
Have you ever wondered if Joseph Smith was drugging the early Mormons? Turns out it might be possible when you have a fantastic congregation that is witnessing angels floating around in the rafters and think that the temple is on fire and they're running out in the snow and writhing around on the ground naked. Yeah, as it turns out, drugs might be the best explanation. Be sure to check out my Sunstone Symposium presentation on the Joseph Smith Entheogen Theory by punching that into any YouTube browser. And thank you so much for checking that out, and be sure to check out the Naked Mormonism podcast. This is the Godless Revolution. Is it God? If it's God, do we get out of school? It's not God, Summer. She's allowed to think it's God if she wants, honey. Shut up, Jerry. Okay. Rejoining the Godless Revolution podcast now. Ooh, it's question and answer time. Are you ready, Ryan? Yeah, I got a question for you. Okay, what is it? Fuck, I forgot. Uh, that's so sad. I was, I was getting pretty <laughs> excited to answer a question that you might have. But we did have questions that were sent in to us from our listeners. Uh, the first question we have comes from Phil Beverly. He says, had a kind of question pop in. What is a topic or conversation? Uh, sorry, I just lost my place. I looked away for a second. What, <laughs> what is a topic or conversation y'all have wanted to do an episode on, but were constantly halted by obligations, legality, not enough information factors, etc." Oh, man, there's so many. The, the most recent oh. one. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, like, we even, we even have a tab that we made for future show ideas that mm -hmm. we still have not gotten to. <laughs> Dude, there's, there's some things that have been on there for, like, five years. I, I, think, uh, I think the problem is most of it's time. Yeah. Yeah. Because we all work a full-time job, and investigation stuff comes down to us. Uh, one thing I was looking at doing, which I still am going to do at work, uh, I want to take stories from the Bible and point out how fucking ridiculous they are. <laughs> yeah. I like just kind of read through them and be like, well, here he says this, but it contradicts there and this. And kind of maybe do like one of those a month, maybe. Kind of yeah. take it and. That'd be fun. Silly Bible take stories. Take it and have fun with it. Yeah. Well, like, so on our future show ideas tab, currently we have Mormonism versus Islam. I think that one's been on there the, the longest. We we talked about doing that, like, in the first year that we had the show going. Just, well, because when we first started doing the show, we were doing, uh, where Matt would bring the questions every week, mm -hmm. where it was a uh, uh, Bible, Book of Mormon, or or, or uh, Islam. Uh -huh. Not Islam, but Tron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. And ask the question, being like, well, where is it from? And be like, well, fuck. It could be from any of them. Yeah, which They're book so does this similar. particular bit of nonsense come from? Yeah. And then, yeah, and then, then he had the idea of, well, we should do Mormonism compared to Islam. Like, they're, they're very similar in a lot of things. You know, that they're both, they're both kind of additions to the Bible and well, you, I mean, even the new Testament's in addition to the Bible kind of. Yeah. Cause, cause the Quran, they split at Abraham, the Quran and the Bible split at Abraham because uh -huh. that's what they're like. Well, we make our differences. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that there's uh morality objective or subjective, which I think we've covered that one a few times. Yeah, we've we've at least we've tap gone, danced like, we've around done the morality it. Morality thing and the free will thing yeah. a couple of times, kind of going over it. Yeah, not our thoughts. Um, let's see what else we got. We got ten questions to ask Mormon missionaries. So, like, here's a here's a good list of things that you should ask a Mormon missionary if and when they show up at your door. To I would also add if we're going to do that. Add them Mormons and the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, yeah, that one's on there also. That's that's it's, right okay. below. Yeah, there's ten questions yeah. to ask Mormon missionaries, <laughs> and then there's ten questions to ask Jehovah's Witnesses. And we, I think, I think uh, Matt and I could do the 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 Mormon questions, and of course with you contributing, because we have 
a long and storied history with the LDS church. Um, and then we could do some research on what to ask Jehovah's witnesses. We also have several Jehovah's okay. witness, uh, listeners, List, listeners yeah. former, former Jehovah's witness well, listeners yeah. that I'm sure that we we've could had on up. the show. Yeah. Yeah. That we could, we could ask them to send us in some good questions. I think that would be awesome. Uh, there's pick a cult and dedicate an episode to it. Maybe a recurring theme. So going through different religious cults and talking about them, just kind of giving a history lesson on a bunch of different cults. That would be fun. We've talked about oh, doing would, that as a, I would do a whole episode on Jim Jones. Oh yeah. Yeah. Dude, I mean, there's like three episodes. Yeah. There's so many different religious cults out there. There are a ton of active religious cults. So it'd be fun yeah. to, to look at, you know, a, a bunch of them throughout history and then some modern day ones and some, some that are in the, in the works right now, like the whole Chad and Lori Daybell thing. Oh, that's, if that's we all. Could find their old, their old, cause they deleted everything. Oh yeah. Before they got caught. Yeah. But there's gotta be on everything lives on, on the internet. So there's gotta be a place where it was saved, where yeah. someone has it. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Their, their craziness. Yeah, the inter- there's the, always the internet wayback machine that can yeah. that can give us a snapshot of old websites. Um, so that would be fun. Uh, there's what's with non bleached stuff, paper towels, napkins, coffee fill. Oh, that was I. <laughs> so that was my. This is how little that I actually look at this page because. <laughs> other stuff I look at it. other stuff runs into it and we and it gets away from me is i was making coffee one day and just had in my hand a coffee filter that was non bleached you know it's just the brown coffee filter and yeah. i know that they sell both bleached and non bleached and i don't really know why like i know they probably made the bleached ones because they're they're white and dazzling and you know are supposed to up. Yeah, like it's supposed to make people think they're somehow better. And then there's the non-bleached ones. But is it that they now sell the non-bleached ones because there were people who thought maybe the bleached stuff was bad was for you or cold. something? Yeah, like I'm curious to know why there's a difference there. So it was just something that while I was standing there thinking it, I jotted that down inside our little note here. Um, Let's see, what's the next one? What is the Antichrist and how does it compare to Trump? That would be fun well, we, because like for, for all of Obama's presidency, you had a bunch of conservatives claiming that he was the antichrist, right? He was the, yeah, yeah. And from what I understand of the antichrist, just through popular media that I have consumed throughout my 40 plus years here on the planet, uh, Donald Trump seems to be a much more, uh, much, much because, more aligned with what I have in my mind as far as what the Antichrist would be and how the Antichrist would act. Because once the Antichrist actually, I thought the Antichrist would claim he is of Christ. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's, that's remember when Donald Trump was, was running for president and then when he was first instilled or first, first <laughs> elected as president? Yeah. Um, and saying, like, making, actual comparisons to himself and Jesus. Oh yeah. Like he, he compared himself to Jesus all the time. So that's when I'm sure that I, that I put that in there and then like seeing the signs where saying like Jesus bows down before Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Like what the fuck <laughs> you know, weird culty shit like that. Um, and then the last one on the list that we have here is placebos are bullshit. Because yeah, that was one that you wanted to do. Yeah, because from everything I've read about placebos, they are bullshit. Like, like actual real studies, placebos are just bullshit. And a lot of people say, oh, well, it's the, place- the placebo effect. And, you know, oh, well, I, I still use this because the placebo effect helps me think that it's doing whatever. And it's like, well, that's really not how it works. And no, it's not what the placebo effect is. Yeah. And I initially did a bunch of research on that. And then just it's just another one of those things that kind of got away from me and we haven't gone back to revisit it so yes. i blame fucking trump for most of this all of <laughs> all of those things fucking news has been in a fucking tailspin for the last three years my god he does at least 
three things every fucking week that any prior president would have been removed from office for like, and, and it's multiple per week, every fucking week from this guy. Yeah. Like Remember they, when it was bad when Obama wore white and put mustard on his hot dog? Remember when that was like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. He did what? Yeah, that was all really, really terrible. Or that he was uh, somehow a Muslim atheist from Kenya who was born in Hawaii. Yeah. 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 And Trump endorsed it. <laughs> all of that fucking nonsense, man. But really, he does, Trump does something several times per week that had it been any other president, the country would have been on fire because of the things that he's done. But he just keeps plowing forward and doing more awful and more stupid and more ridiculous things. So we kind of forget about the other things because we're in the constant state of outrage over the new outrageous fucking thing that he's just done. Yeah, and I think... And that is honestly why the podcast over the last three years has been way more political because I think we've had a need to be more political than anti-religious because it's the biggest threat more of a facing problem now. Than fucking, yeah. 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 I think it's, I think it's been a prioritization of looming dangerous threats and yeah. I don't know. I was thinking about it the other day that, you know, that's ostensibly why we've been, covering politics much more heavily since, you know, Trump came into, came into power and a lot of the religious stuff has kind of slid to the side, but religion is what has propped him up. You know, it's the evangelicals and conservative Christians who for whatever reason, and well, I, I say for whatever reason, it's because he hates the same people that they hate. He he's given voice and power to their, powerless bigotry and they fucking love him for it. And it's yeah. all, it's all powered. The, the, the main driving force behind all of that are their ridiculous religious beliefs. And maybe we need to do a better job of highlighting. This is what Trump has done. And here's how he's gotten away with it because of these bullshit backward religious beliefs. So, well, hopefully when Biden gets in office, we can do more. Fuck you, Christianity. <laughs> yeah, hopefully the world won't be quite a mess and and we can yeah. focus on other things that are that are problems. It's just it's just that, you know, like I say, reprioritization of threat. And the biggest yeah. threat in the world right now is Donald Trump. Um, OK, so hopefully that answers are we going to do this one? Uh, yes, we have to, we have to, (laughs) this was sent in to us from a listener who is very curious. (laughs) Yes, it is sent in from a listener who asks this question all the time. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, let's see. Listener Laurie Duffy would like to know when you coming home to visit. That's my question. Yeah, that's my mother. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, not any time during COVID. (laughs) I am not allowed to travel oh that's right you have you have besides you know uh, a health concern like just a personal health concern not that you have health problems but just that you know you personally probably don't want to contract the coronavirus uh you have I a mean, actual work restriction that says you if you travel to any the, of these places then you can't come back to work yeah the the department of defense says i cannot come back to work if i travel Hmm. Uh, I mean, not only that, like I point out, like someone asked a stupid question, like, oh, why are you so afraid of COVID? Like most people don't die. And I said, I told him, I said, I'm not worried about dying of COVID. I'm worried about having permanent lung damage that would allow me never to be able to work my job again. Yeah, no kidding, right? Like all of these fucking idiots who think that, oh, well, it's, you know, less than 1% of the people who get it actually die from it. And that's less than 1% of the population. What are you, what are you afraid of? Like, like they're so fucking stuck in this binary world that you're you know you either get the virus or you don't and then if you get it you either die or you don't and then that's it right there's it's it's the permanent lasting effects of the virus that have been showing in people yeah that's what i'm worried about yeah and they 
are too fucking stupid to, to consider anything other than get sick, die. Mm, bad. Yeah. yeah. No, they get sick. If I get permanent lung damage, if I have lung damage and I can't pass my physical, I lose my job. Lung damage, heart damage, brain damage, you know, multiple internal organ failure and damage. As as a firefighter, I have to take a physical and part of that physical is measuring my lung capacity. Mm -hmm. And if I fail that, I'm done. Like, sorry, you can't work your job anymore because you can't, your lungs aren't healthy enough. You can't go fighting fires where there's a bunch of smoke and junk. You go well, it's basically, peel over. It's because of uh, the respirator I have to wear. Yeah. I have to be able to pass a test that shows I can actually physically wear that respirator. Without a lot of issues. Without having an issue. Yeah. And that my heart is in good enough condition and everything like that. So, yeah. Like every year when I take it, I always feel good. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you've got less than a 1% chance of heart failure. That's pretty good. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. <laughs> I like when it's less than 1% versus higher than 1%. No. Yeah. yeah. So, so you yeah, don't so know is, is the ultimate answer there, but not yeah, anytime real down. soon. We're still, we're still allowed to travel. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, the Rules next, the, Department of Defense. <laughs> the next one is from Taylor Grin. He asks, would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? I'm thinking about this one. But I, I put a lot of thought into this. Yeah? And I think I have a valid answer. Yeah? 100 duck-sized horses. Oh, yeah, why? You can kick something that small pretty easily. Yeah, dude, but I it's 100 of them. Yeah, I could kick 100 soccer balls. I think it's a lot more than you think. Like you, if you, if you think about a hundred duck sized horses and horses are fucking strong too, right? Like we're talking about, that's small. We're talking about a hundred things attacking you all at the same time. I mean, it's biting you, kicking you. They don't have sharp teeth and their mouths are going to be wasted. They don't have sharp teeth, but they do have pretty powerful jaws. Like they can, they bite hard. Now they're duck sized. Yeah. So that power, you got to take that, like, figure out the equation from size and size and down. I mean, the, the power's got to diminish by that much, too. But yeah, but it's a hundred the of them. are smaller. But it's a hundred yeah, all hundred coming at you at a time. Like, like my, my dogs are about the same size as a duck-sized horse, right? Yeah. And there is no fucking way I would want a hundred of my, a hundred things that are the size of my dog all attacking me at the same, of my dogs attacking me all at the same time. Like... If if all no. four of my dogs start going at me as we're playing, if they're they're a handful, and that's four. I can't imagine what I would do if there them. were ninety six others. The question is, we just got to fight them. Now, this is like a typical movie fight. If you got a hundred of them, they come at you one at a time, <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of them are just kind of waiting in the wings, Wait, agitating. They're, they're, right? They're just wait for their turn to get kicked. They're just they're just waving their arms around a little bit, looking generally menacing. Yeah. Just circling you, <laughs> one, one at a time. One one enters the ring at a time. Come they at me, bro. <laughs> they're not jumping you. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, if it if it were like in the movies, then yes, I would say I would rather fight one hundred uh, duck sized horses. But if they're all coming at me at the same time, I would much rather fight one duck sized horse or one horse sized duck. Yes, yeah, I would. Hey, you can just. I would much rather fight one horse sized duck than one hundred duck sized horses. I, but here's my other thing. Punch a horse, a full-size horse. Uh-huh. You ain't doing much. Right. The level of damage you can inflict on that one animal, being that big, uh-huh. it ain't much. Uh-huh. So I think a hundred of them being small, they're a lot weaker. They're, but they're, You can climb a ladder. They'd still be powerful as fuck, man. Like a hundred, a hundred things the size of a, of a duck, but with four legs a mouth that can bite you and like can kick the shit out of you. I know that when I'm sitting in the chair at night 
and one of the dogs sees something on the television that it doesn't like, if it happens to be in my lap and they go running off to attack whatever they see on the television and use my lap as a springboard, meaning that they inevitably kick me in the balls just about as hard as they can. Uh, yeah, I would. Yeah. A, a hundred of those things happen in at various parts uh, of my body. There's no, uh-uh, I can't, I cannot withstand. I would lose that fight. It sounds like we need to make a trip to some Chinese island and breed these things. <laughs> we need to go there and we need to breed one duck-sized horse and 100 horse-sized, or, yeah, you know. No, you. <laughs> 100 duck-sized horses uh-huh. and one horse-sized duck. Yes. We, we need to go to that island off the coast of China where we, where we, where we make humans uh-huh. and, and start breeding those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's legal there. <laughs> <laughs> or so I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. We have a few more questions lined up. Like three or four or five. Uh, and we'll do those when we get back after this little break. Okay. Hey, everybody. It's X from the Utah Outcasts podcast and YouTube channel. And you're listening to The Godless Revolution. Scary stuff, huh? Pretty freaky. Hi, I'm Morty's math teacher. I'm also part of the street team inviting folks to the church downtown so we can pray together. How is praying going to help? Ma'am, a giant head in the sky is controlling the weather. Did you want to play checkers? Let's be rational. I'll see you at God's house. Thank you to everybody who has rated the show on iTunes and Stitcher and are following us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And to all our Patreon patrons, you make the show possible. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. That song's stuck in my head. There's some whores in this house? Yeah, that's from the Cardi B song. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> What? That's the. You know how much I listen to Cardi B. That's the background. Is none. That's the background sampling. Is which, which I I yeah I don't listen to <laughs> that particular artist. Boy, she's she's very curvy. That the video <laughs> that video uh, made it very hot in my house. It was made the temperature go up quite a bit. Didn't people say they wanted her to run for office? That's what I heard someone else say. Cardi B run for office? Like for Congress or Senate or something. Really? Yeah. I guess she was getting pretty political on one of them things, the Instagram or TikTok or something. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know. Huh. It'd be interesting. It would be. (laughs) Should 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 we answer some more questions? Okay. Okay. Do we have a real question now? Yes, we have a real question okay. now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of a, a a way to creatively edit the, the how we started the segment, and maybe I'll just leave it the way <laughs> the way it went. Because, yeah, yeah, just 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 leave it. It was uh, yeah. Because I've got this uh, earworm now in my head. This this song, and I'll it's just playing on repeat. It's just that it's that sampling. In my head. Just do that typical, just fade it back in, and we're good to go. <laughs> so, uh, the next question, and it is a real question, from Taylor <laughs> Grin says, real question, what would you add or change about the show if you had more time to do it? What do you say, sir? There are so many things that I... I would I would like to do, well, if we could do, like, like which comes down to the, the time, more uh, investigative stories where we can really like take that dive where maybe it would take 10, 15 hours of sitting there researching something to be able to go like multiple resources, really digging in on something uh, to do more deep dives on subjects like doing like the cults, be able to take that and do a, a real deep dive and do episodes where it's yeah, a deep dive episode onto subjects where it's a lot more research into it. And just the whole episode or two are dedicated just to that. Mm-hmm. That, that would be, I wouldn't mind. Yeah, yeah. I trying think, to do that. Yeah, I think that more. would be great. And that's that's on my list. Uh, some of the other things on my list, just as the person who edits the show and all of that is, you know, one of the things I'd love to do is finish setting up the new board so that we could just 
record and I could drop in the things as we're going along and doing all of that. But that would take some time between each show to update um, all of the interstitial pieces that I'll play between segments and, you know, getting the intro down and then having some way to cue you since you're not here to that. Yeah. I, you know, I'm going to be doing that. Although, you know, if I just started playing something in the background, I would um, know you, you would be able to start hearing it. You know, really? like if, Am I an idiot? if this came on, yes, it would be nice if you could throw your sins and your, you know, I, like I have some things programmed into the board. It's just a question of remembering where they all are and all that. Like, so yeah. having the time to do all of that, um, I would love to be able to start doing like video stuff for the show. Um, yeah. I mean, we, yeah, we talked about that before, you know, like, like, and, and because we're separated right now, it's almost like the perfect time to do it, but I'm an idiot as far as <laughs> like, I I love technology and everything, but I'm an idiot about, you know, how best to broadcast things out to the YouTubes and the Twitters and all of that, like simultaneously or to do a live streaming, anything like that. It just, I'm, I'm like, we could do it. We could wing it. We could try to see how it goes, but I am just afraid that it would be a total shit show that, you know, it would be, Oh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? I can't see you. We've lost our feed. Someone got disconnected. It basically, I'm worried that it would be like, a uh, conference meeting <laughs> at work yeah. where well, I so mean, much time is spent just wondering if people can hear you and see you. And if any time's a good time to try it, it would be now where we could both get on webcam separately on different devices and yeah. broadcast it out. Yeah. Let's talk to Chris. Cause that's how they do it. Yeah. And well, and you know, I know he uses OBS and I think I have that installed on this machine, but yeah, it's like I it's it's a question of lighting, you know, how to use the software, how to set it up so that it streams to those different things. I don't I don't I know dick about video editing and putting it out there and if we're going to do it live, then I don't it's just I don't know what the fuck I need to know to even begin to do it. You know what I mean? Like it would yeah, take I know video editing. It would take a lot of time. Well, and that's editing which would be something different. So I would like to be able to do some live streaming stuff and, and video stuff uh, yeah. and to, and to have our, you know, patrons and other just listeners join us on calls and shit like that. But I just don't have the first fucking clue on how to do it. And I don't have the time to invest to figure out how to do it. Um, so that would be one thing that I would really like to do if I had the time, but I just don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> The other thing I would like to do would be to write and record skits, you know, various, oh, yeah. various little things that would be fun. We, and we've done a few of those in the past, but it's been a long time ago. And I, I wrote a bunch a while back that I never shot. Yeah. That was, uh, Jesus's bar, Jesus's brother in the bar. Oh. <laughs> and it's just nothing but, but his brother complaining about Jesus. And how he got all the claims and all the, the accolades and everyone knows him, but nobody knows his brother. So instead of so Marsha, 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 it's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and like his brother's at the bar, like changing the water and the wine at the bar and doing magic tricks for people, but nobody gives a fuck because he's not Jesus. James is just like, fuck you, Jesus. Yeah, pretty much. And it's it was just him, the bartender, that you would see. And there, it, just jesus's brother bitching which could be done in an audio format like i know how to do that everybody thinks I, I, jesus to, is so great but it's only because he's got these special yeah. powers and he's the son of god <laughs> yeah like, I, I got fuck I, I can do shit too that would be fun um yeah. so yeah doing video doing skits um like you said you know doing a deep dive researching different things there there have been a few people that have popped up as we've been recording shows um, or that we've listened to or watched clips of various religious idiots doing different things. And, you know, we've done a couple segments on know thine enemy <laughs> where, yeah. where we kind of go into the background of a lot of the people that we 
hear squawking about religion and how atheists are bad and God is good and blah, blah, blah. Um, and we haven't done a, we haven't done a know thine enemy for a little while. I started no. researching Lance wall. Now that guy's a fucking okay. joke. Dr. Lance wall. Now <laughs> he's, he has an honorary doctorate from some bullshit online thing that doesn't really even fucking exist. And has people calling him fucking doctor. He's a doctor of yeah. bullshit. It, Cause if, if you have a doctorate in theology, I can go online and get one of those. Yeah. And I can't even remember if his was in theology. It might've been, but it, it was some, it was a bullshit degree from an even more bullshit school. Like the school <laughs> doesn't fucking exist. Like, and he calls Trump himself University. doctor. Yeah. He calls himself doctor and has other yeah. people refer to him as doctor. The it's doctor. fucking bullshit. It, it's like Dr. Dre. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's Dr. Dr. Dre doctor. without he's the sick ass beats, man. <laughs> he's a beat doctor. So yeah, all of those things. Uh, I had, I had like this whole mental list prepared and now, now I'm thinking about Lance wall now and what a fucking douche canoe he is that it's, escaped my brain what else i would like to do but yeah primarily just get you know having more interaction doing more video stuff um uh, doing live stuff and then the beauty of doing live streaming shit like that is that i don't even have to worry about editing really like yeah. if it just goes out live all of our fuck ups right there yeah then it's done Ooh, i know the, another one that i would really like to do another thing that i would really like to do is where we have like a call-in segment I don't, yeah. Like whether it's, yeah. you know, an entire show or every other show or once per month or whatever, but where we have, you know, just whoever can call us and ask us questions or and the pose way we different have the board set, that new board, we can do that. Yeah. 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 I would. Well, <laughs> we can do it, but again, it's that, you know, it's the trying to get people to call in and schedule all of that and then mix it in. Like it's just a lot of stuff that I just don't have the time to do. Um, but yeah, I would love to do like a live call in thing where people can yeah. just call and ask us questions. That would be, that would be fun, but I don't know the software that people typically use for that. I don't know how we would get it into the show. We, we wouldn't be able to screen the calls. Mm -hmm. the way we have everything set up right now because we might get another anti-vaxxer on the line yeah uh fucking tim which would be <laughs> which would be okay i think i could probably keep my cool for the most part uh it was a it was a lesson i learned that i can... uh i think if we if we if we start doing maybe if, if, if we can just do it once a month maybe yeah or we can do something at an appropriate time where we can do it live on YouTube. Yeah. And if we announce it on our pages, our listeners that, that frequent our page will at least know what's going on. And if they would like to call in and kind of get those things started, we can, uh, it's, I, I'll do some looking into that to see what we got to do. Okay. That would be awesome, man. Because that would be a lot of fun. I think it would be a lot of fun to have it would be. religious people call in atheists, call, just anybody just call in and ask us questions and shoot the shit yeah. with us for a bit. I think that would be a lot of fun. Cause early, early on, we did do that one live show. We're mm -hmm. like episode like 12 mm -hmm. early. We got yeah. a fair amount of people to show up and we we're like, we just started this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would be a lot of fun. Um, so there's, um, there's some things I know that there are others that have slipped my mind. I should have written them down. Uh, but again, there's that whole time stuff. Um, and usually as I'm thinking about stuff, it's on my way to, from doing one thing to doing another thing. And I just need to yeah. get in. I need to develop better habits about noting the things that are on my mind as I'm doing that. Um, the next question comes to us from almighty Mjolnir. Don't be a Richard on Twitter. <laughs> uh, and his question is, after all this COVID shit dies down, would you guys be up to doing some kind of meetup for those of us that are local? Absolutely. Yeah. Whether we go to like Piper Down and get some fucking beers and hang out or just fucking go to the park and 
dress up in our best satanic clothes and scare the shit out of kids. <laughs> <laughs> scare the <laughs> scare the shit out of kids. But <laughs> oh, I mean, that okay. sounds like fun to me. Yeah, <laughs> I guess we could have a good, we could have a good time doing that. Um, but yeah, my my answer is absolutely. I would love to do that. Um, I would love to do like a live show or even just a meet and greet, like you said. Just go to yeah. Piper Down and hang out. I think Piper Down would probably let us do a a live show there. Um, do you think we could get that back? that back uh patio yeah i think we could i think we could reserve well i don't know about the outdoor area because that's a smoking area i don't know if they'll let us yeah if they'll let us like rope off that area for ourselves because other customers will want to come out and smoke their cigarettes or vape or cigars or whatever i know that other half where it's still like the private where you can reserve it yeah still connected to the main area so it's loud as fuck in there still anyways yeah yeah well and then they've got the new upstairs area like i should i should okay. just talk to cherish <laughs> yeah i should talk to cherish and see what see what we can line up because she's very cool piper down is very cool they're very supportive of of us atheists and the things that we yeah. do and junk and stuff so and are going to be needing some business soon yeah when everything gets back to normal whenever that is god it just seems like it's so far off and yeah. All of these fucking idiots who won't wear their goddamned fucking mask yep, are just I, making are just making it worse. They're just pushing off being able to get back to normal. Fucking other countries and other areas of other countries, things are pretty much back to normal for them because they don't have a bunch of fucking mask holes running around talking about it's just either you're going to get it or you're not. We need herd immunity and you're going to get sick because you're wearing like all these stupid fucking assholes who don't yeah. know what the fuck they're talking about and won't listen to the people who make it their life's work to do this kind of shit. I uh, just went on a little tear. Sorry. Yeah. And said we listened to a fucked up pseudo celebrity. Yeah. Yeah. We listened to a fucking orange game show host because he's obviously the one who's so fucking smart, right? He has like yeah. a good, a brain and all the best words. <laughs> It's like they call uh, it a uh, a brain up here. That's where I know the things. Fuck him. Fucking. I just. I hate him so much. So much. I uh, hate him more. <laughs> next, <laughs> the next question comes to us from Savita Kuna. And he says, if you could legalize one controlled substance, what would it be and why? I know my answer. What's yours? weed yeah that's my answer as well um i don't honestly i don't even know why it is a controlled substance it in my mind it's much safer than alcohol but yeah you know you don't there you don't really develop an addiction to it as far as i can tell uh there's you know there's no mental or physical dependence on it possibly a mental dependence um, but it's, you want it, but I mean, but you don't go into like, if you're an alcoholic, like an actual alcoholic, you can die from withdrawals from, yeah. From not drinking. Yeah. And I don't think that you can die from not smoking pot. You, you can't, you might get like, oh fuck, I got anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think weed for me is definitely the one, you know, of all the controlled substances out there, uh, that. If I could just wave a magic wand and make it legal, that would be the one for sure. Because yeah. it just, it seems silly to me that it's not legal now because it's as far as everything that I know about it and everything I know about alcohol, it's much, much safer than alcohol and much less toxic for your body than alcohol. Yeah. And offers a bunch of fucking benefits that you don't get from alcohol. So it's, it's like a win win. There's, there are very few bad side effects, a bunch of good side effects, and it's much safer for you. If they tax it like they do in most states, maybe it would get us out of this fucking mess Trump got us in. Oh, that would be good too, yeah. I know Utah's schools could sure use a, a shot in the arm as far as funding goes. There's a bunch of things in Utah that could use a shot in the arm for funding, but... You know, they we'd we'd much rather have all of the Utahns go to Wendover to get their weed and gambling yeah. taken care of. So, 
we we we'd we'd rather have Utah citizens and taxpayers pay for better schools for Nevadans, apparently, and, yeah. and Coloradans. And uh, Idaho. That's and only because lottery tickets. Idahoans. Is that just a potato or is it the people there as well? What well, I don't I've never met a potato ho. <laughs> well, like Utahns are Utahns, right? Coloradans yeah. are Coloradans and Arizonans. Like is I I know there's an Idahoan potato. Like that's a brand of potato product. But is, Oh yeah, I met the guy. Isn't that also <laughs> isn't that also like People from Idaho, you're an Idahoan. I don't know. It's just beyond me. It's something that I don't know. Well, like if you're from Wisconsin, you're a Wisconsinite, right? But I don't think they're Idahoites. Maybe they're an Idanite. There's a lot of whites in Idaho, but <laughs> it's primarily oh, yeah, white people. White supremacist Idaho. <laughs> if you're from Idaho, you're a white supremacist. I forgot. Uh huh. Yeah. What's the uh, <laughs> What's the area there that's super the white supremacist? No. They're in northern Idaho. <laughs> no, uh, Coeur d'Alene. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Coeur d'Alene. Yeah. It, yeah I, I don't know. I've just heard stories that it's notoriously racist area. There are well, a bunch that's of, where uh, I can't remember the guy's name that was there in the 80s and 90s where he had his white supremacist camp. Oh, yeah. That's where it was located. I thought it was Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, is where he had his mecca where white supremacists were going. And he was taking in like 16 and 17 year old uh, delinquents into his camp and basically being like, yeah, free weed, free booze, we party, and we kick black people's asses. Mm, making child, making, making racist child soldiers. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Then he got raided and busted by the FBI. And yeah. It, it got busted up. I don't have any idea who you're talking about, but I'll have to look into it. Like I've just I, I in the back the of my mind, the guy. yeah, in the back of my mind, I've known or have heard that Coeur d'Alene is notoriously racist area. Yeah, and yeah. I wasn't sure why. That's just what I've always heard. Yeah, it, it used to have a large white supremacist movement based out of that area. Yeah. Hmm. But they say they're no longer there. But you know, people deep down in their hearts are still racist. <laughs> you know deep down they just really love that racism yep it's, it's as american as apple pie <laughs> hey everybody i'm mary and i'm shelly we have the latter day lesbian podcast it's the podcast about an ex-mormon gay girl just trying to figure out her life mm -hmm. and so we do that every week on a podcast don't we we do you're supposed to jump in sorry just jump in anytime okay. <laughs> i'm here we are available on your favorite podcast app. Just uh, look for Latter-day Lesbian, where your favorite podcast can be heard. And you're listening to The Godless Revolution. People, everyone, remain calm. Every crisis of faith is an opportunity for more faith. When God deals you an 11, you don't fold. You double down and always hit on a soft 16. That means you, Juice. I beg your pardon, Pastor, but the last I looked outside, it seems to be you that's been dealt the weak hand. Jews rule! You and the godless revolution will be reassimilated in three, two, one. Uh, the next question comes to us is also from Savid, and he says, what has been your most difficult conversation about religion and your funniest? That's hmm. a hard one. Cause I don't know, like, difficult. Because me, I've always been an atheist. Like, I've never been religious. Yeah. I've never taken God to be a real thing my entire life. So it's really difficult. Like, I've always had... It's always been easy for me to mock it or mock it towards the, like, being like, yeah, I think you're stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It would be, it would be great if I felt that way. Like, I don't know. In the back of my mind, a lot of the time, I still am hesitant to let people know that I'm an atheist in, in different circumstances because I fear what they will think about me afterward, which is a shitty thing, right? And, yeah. and I, I mean, I, I'm very open about being an atheist. Uh, it's just in certain circumstances, it doesn't, it doesn't flow as naturally and easily from me as I would like it to. Like there's still that bit of hesitancy, that, that little bit of fear, like, that, that nagging fear. In the back. Yeah. Yeah. That, oh, what will be the repercussions 
if they find out that I'm an atheist or if I say something that upsets them. Yeah. There's, there's always that little bit of nagging fear in the back of my mind that I don't know. I keep thinking that I will just one day be over it, but it hasn't happened yet for various reasons. I'm sure. Uh, so the most difficult conversation about religion for me, that would probably be the one that I had with my father where I was was thinking you were going to say, yeah, where I was disowned afterward for, uh, for telling him that I think his views and the things that he has said and done, um, denigrating members of the LGBTQ community have been so hurtful and harmful to other members of his family who, because he was so bigoted and so cruel and so narrow minded, he telegraphed to everybody that they could, that they could never trust him to be their unique selves around him. And yeah, I think that's heartbreaking and depressing and sad. And having, having that conversation with him was difficult. And I don't know. It still bothers me. Like I would love to be the guy that just says, yeah, fuck him. He was a piece of shit. I don't, you know, I don't want anything to do with him anymore. I never did blah, blah, blah. But even though he was a giant fucking asshole, he was still my dad. And I yeah. still miss, you know, some, some, some things about him. And I still have, you know, fond or funny memories of some of the times spent with him. And so, you know, it's always difficult when those memories come to for come to the front of my mind. And, and I think about them and realize that I may never, you know, share, I, I may never build any other memories like that with him. And that my last memory of any interaction with him will be receiving a letter from him saying that I've been disowned. So it's, it's rough. It sucks, but I think it was absolutely something that I had to do. I, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're going to make me pick between my father and my children, it's my children easily any fucking day of the week and twice on Sunday. So it's, it's, I, I kind of feel like he painted me into a corner and then got upset that I told him who he is, <laughs> that, that I let him well, know I, that he's an asshole and he was upset by that. And somehow that made now, me the you, bad guy. You stood your ground. Yeah. <laughs> that phrase is so loaded <laughs> and fraught with well, all kinds of other things. But yes, you're right. I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to make an exception and continue to allow my father to act the way he was around people that I care about and that are much better people than he is. And well, I guess, I guess a, a better way to say it, you didn't back down just because he was your father and he like, just be like, well, you're, it's my dad. So I got to respect what he says. It's like, no, what you're saying is shitty. And you should know how horrible this has hurt people in the family. And I do not respect that thought. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I did. And, and I, I don't know, man, I, there, I, I definitely could have handled it differently. I could have tried to be more kind in my approach to him, but it was just, you know, as, as the conversation unfolded with him and, you know, we started getting to, into some of the specifics and everything for him to not even acknowledge a lot of the things that he has said and to not really apologize for any of them. And instead to try to play the victim in all of it mm-hmm. and then question my motivation in wanting him to not be a fucking prick to my children and his grandchildren for him to try to play victim. They're really just set me off, I think. And it was a learning experience. Um, but yeah, that was easily the most difficult conversation that I've had about religion. And I don't think, I mean, at at this point he's, I don't think ever going to change, you know, he, he'll, I, I imagine that he'll die before we ever speak to each other again. Uh, he's, not in the best of health and the same with my grandmother. She's not in the best of health. 
and she has disowned me as well. And I kind of get that because he's her child. You know, I was standing up for my children. She's standing up for her child, but she's standing up for her child who is a fucking asshole. And (laughs) it just, the, the part of it that bothers me the most is that she chose to defend someone who was causing demonstrable harm to other members of his family and will continue doing so and propping up and defending her church that also does that. So it all is tied back to their religion. Their religion has made them be moral monsters and, and just exist in this confusing cloud of amoral and immoral views about so many people who whose lives they negatively affect on a day-to-day basis and don't care because they've been taught their entire lives from that same church that those views are in line with what their God wants them to what their God wants them to believe and how their God wants them to view the world and how they should treat those other people. And I think that's fucking gross. That's so sick and wrong to me that they would provide all of this financial and physical support to a church that causes demonstrable harm to people that do not harm the church itself. That's just, that's fucking gross to me. That's sickening. And if that means that I will never have any kind of relationship with my grandmother or father going forward, then that's their choice. I was open and honest with them about my beliefs and how I believe that what they're doing is causing harm to others. And then I was shunned for that. They made the decision to leave me out in the cold. I didn't disown them. Right. I'm, they're the ones who were being fucking assholes and, and treating other people horribly. And I got punished for that. So they can go fuck themselves. And it's easy for me to say that now, but like I say, there are, there are often times that I'm, that I get a little bit sad when I think about some of the fun times that we've had in the past. So, well, it's, it's like we we've said before, you can make your own family. Yeah. They don't have to be blood. They don't have to be relatives. Yeah. But you can make your own family out of people that actually want to be around you and support you and be there for you. Yeah. Your chosen family is always going to be better than your blood family <laughs> because you can even choose that, you know, to have members of your own blood related, blood related family in your chosen family. So yeah, it's always going to be a better mix than simply relying on who you share genetic information with. Now the funniest, the funniest conversation that I've had about religion. I mean, we've had a lot of good conversations on the show with other people that have been funny. Yeah. On and off air. Yeah. I can't, I can't tie down like a single one. I think the funniest one for me personally is, and it goes back to Damf and the old team that I worked on at the IRS when I was first hired. And just my, my favorite religious conversations are the ones that I don't even really participate in, but that I instigate where, <laughs> where I ask two people who, you know, as far as anybody knows at the time, because these two people share the same religious belief, that, you know, or they, they share the same church or, you know, total full, full blown worldview as far as religion is concerned, because they identify as a Catholic or, or a Methodist or a Mormon or a Jehovah's witness or whatever is to ask those people. And it can be people who go to the same church on the same day at the same time. They're in the same congregation. They, they learn from the same people, they sing the same hymns at the same time, and to ask them questions about specific points of doctrine to find out where they diverge from each other and from the church that teaches them these things, and then just sit back and watch them have that conversation. Those are always the best to me. The funniest one, 
and we've talked about it on the show previously, was when I can't remember how the conversation got started, but I got Damf and another one of my coworkers to talk about uh, whether the Holy Spirit can go into a strip club <laughs> or not. And they, they did not agree with each other. They're both Mormons. They're both men of roughly the same age and roughly the same upbringing being from Northern Utah, very conservative. And they did not agree on whether the Holy spirit or Holy ghost can go into a strip club or not. Um, Damp was convinced, or I should say probably is convinced that the Holy Spirit cannot go into a strip club. And that's why the church tells people to not go in the strip club because then the Holy Spirit can't go in there and help protect you. Because apparently, I don't know, it, it, the Holy Spirit is scared by boobies. <laughs> like it's rendered powerless by a nipple or even a pasty over a nipple. Too much, too much of a butt showing makes the Holy Spirit shy away and repels him. The power of ass compels you to stay out of, <laughs> to stay out of the strip club. Uh, uh, so he, so Danf was convinced that you, that the Holy Spirit cannot go in. And my other coworker was convinced that the Holy Spirit can go in. And the reason he gave as for why he believed, not even just that he believes, but that he knows that the Holy Spirit can go into a strip club is because he has gone into a strip club. And from ah. the sounds of it, the, the intimation was that there, he's been inside a strip club multiple times. Uh, felt but, the Holy Spirit. But he said that he knows the Holy Spirit can go into a strip club because he's been in strip clubs and would have done horrible things were it not for the presence of the Holy Spirit being there to guide and advise him. I, I wonder what his definition of doing horrible things at the strip club is, because a lot of things at the strip club are welcome to happen. Yeah. Like, but there are horrible things that are not welcome to happen anywhere. Yeah, I was probably, you know, get a lap dance or, or give them money for for oh, that's prostituting themselves like like dirty whores in the strip club. <laughs> I'm I'm guessing that those are the the bad things that would have happened, you know, that that in his mind giving a woman money for shaking her ass in his face would be a bad thing. So Yeah. That would be that would be the funniest is just when I can get religious people talking about specific points of doctrine and seeing that they don't agree with each other when you know these are these are important points of your of what your church has taught you your entire life why do you guys not agree about this maybe when you guys agree then you can come and fucking talk to me about what I should believe but until you do figure your shit out Now I I will say though the funniest thing that's ever happened on the show uh -huh. has to go back to Matt's Bigfoot story. <laughs> yeah, that was that. I think that was the funniest moment in the show for me of all time because it was unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> it caught me totally off guard. I'm really glad that I did not have a mouthful of beer or rum and because coke it would or have anything been on me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you would have been showered in alcohol had I had I had a drink in my hand at that at that particular moment because I yeah. I fell out like I was done. I It was a good 15 minutes of non-stop laughing. Oh, easily. Yeah. Like I was sore for days afterward just from <laughs> laughing so hard for so long. A good ab workout. <laughs> yeah, that was, for me, that was the funniest moment of the show, for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Have you had any funny religious conversations that you can think of? I don't of? know, because I usually, like, when we talk about religion at work, it's either, like, trying to have, like, a real discussion, mm -hmm. or us just making fun of shit. Hmm. So I can't think of one that's been, like, funny oh huh. i mean people people laugh at me when i say shit sometimes <laughs> but that, that's different so when i the 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 most recent kind of funny conversation that i had concerning religion um 
was when I was out looking for pressure treated wood to build the stringers for my stairs out here. And I had gone to, you know, like every Lowe's and Murray within like a 20 or 30 mile distance of my house. And they were all sold out or it was just picked over in really shitty wood. And I went online and found out that Burton lumber had some. So I drove out to Burton lumber and that was a whole other, that was a whole other kind of shit show. But the guy that was helping me, I drove my car into their little, little lot where they store all of their stock and where, you know, I'm helping him carry uh, two by 12 by 16 foot boards over to his table saw to cut them in half for me so that I can take them in the truck. Mm. Yeah. And he, as we're, as we're carrying the boards, each time we pass by my truck, he's, you know, I can see him staring at the, at the uh. license plate on my truck the whole time as we're going over to the saw table and back and forth. And, you know, initially when, when he came out into the yard, he was a little gruff, kind of dickish. And then he warmed up as we took several trips past the truck and then on the last board, you know, we took the board over, he cut it in half. I carried one of the sections over to the truck. He carried the other, we put it in the back and, you know, we kind of both back up away from the truck and we're admiring the wood that's now in the, in the, <laughs> in the bed of my truck. And he looks and he kind of points at the license plate and he's like, Oh, godless. I, Oh, I thought it said something different. And I'm like, oh yeah. And he said, yeah, I thought it said God bless. And I'm like, oh no, oh, oh no, no, no. I said, no, I'm, I'm definitely a heathen. And he just kind of like, he jerked <laughs> his head over in my direction. And he's like, oh yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't believe in God. That's, that's not a thing for me. And he was like, oh, well, yeah, I guess I was wrong then. And he just kind of walked away and I just kind of <laughs> chuckled to myself like, he was gruff at first. And then when he thought that it said, God bless, he was kind of a nice guy to me. And then at the end he realized that it wasn't. And I said, I was a heathen. And then he wanted nothing else to do with me. I just thought that was kind of funny. Like, like he didn't know how to react. Yeah. Like, like we could have, we could have a perfectly friendly conversation up until he believed or found out that then, you know, Oh no, it says godless. He must be a terrible person despite <laughs> our very cordial interaction and then just decide that, well, I must be a terrible person. So fuck that guy in particular. In particular. <laughs> this is Dr. Dan, Matt's boss from the two skeptical chaps podcast. And you are listening to the godless revolution. Oh shit. Did I say rev? I mean, revolution. Bloody Americans fucking up the language. You can edit that right, Spike. I'm just going to come out and make this pitch. The old gods are dead. F all previous existing religions all hail the one true God, the giant head in the sky. So if you'll all excuse me, I'm going out onto the sidewalk, I'm dropping to my knees and pledging my eternal soul to the thing that literally controls the f***ing weather. Out of my way. If you have questions, comments, concerns, compliments, corrections, criticisms, or concepts for content, contact the show via email at godlessrevolution at gmail.com, by text or voicemail at 330-81-REBEL, or Twitter the twatter at TGR Podcast. Thank you! Uh, we have one question remaining, and I just looked at the clock here, and prior to recording this segment, I told Ryan, okay, we got about 20 minutes, and we've gone 20 minutes over the 20 minutes, so... <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a longer episode, so uh, my apologies if you weren't expecting a longer episode, but you'll get one nonetheless. Uh, the last question we have comes from Seth Allen, who's a, who started listening to the show fairly recently, and I think has been going through our back catalog and catching up. Uh, but he sent this question to what? you, actually, so why don't you read this one? Yeah. Have you and Dan ever wondered how many religious people listen to your podcast? I'm, I'm more spiritual than religious, but I enjoy the ribbing you guys give to the religious crazies. <laughs> I've, I don't know. I guess it, it's something that I wonder about every now and then because we, I mean, obviously we do have some religious people who listen to the show. Uh, yeah. You know, we've had people that have found us because they were religious or Early on, we got a few funny emails from people being like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. And, and I mean, so Tim, who we had on the show, who was a listener, said he, what was he, wasn't he Catholic? 
No, he said he was. He didn't. He doesn't define his religion. Oh right, he didn't. He didn't identify as one particular sect or not. But he he believed in God. He was a religious or spiritual person. And but he, he also, I think, it was like he believed in like the Bible and stuff. But he didn't believe in what the. It's like he didn't believe in conformed religion, but believed everything that conformed religion teaches. It's kind of, he was he was interesting. Yeah. I think he was confused a lot. Like, I, I don't think he had given a lot of thought to what he thinks or why he thinks it. Um, Cause yeah, he's just hard to peg down. Yeah. And I know that there are other people who are religious who listen to the show. I hear from them infrequently, maybe once or twice a year. Uh, if you are a religious person out there and you're listening to the show and would like to come on, let us know. We can have a nice conversation with you. I'm curious to know why you believe the silly things you believe. <laughs> I'll try to not refer to them as silly well, things while we're talking. Possibly, maybe. Like, uh, I'm trying to think of the guy's name right now that we had come on that runs his own uh, show. Oh, yeah. Uh, religious. Um, McCready. Yes. Sean, Sean, Sean McCready. McCraney. McCraney. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. He was, a, he was a lovely guest to have on. I actually really enjoy talking with him. Like that was, I came into that conversation thinking like, Oh fuck, what are we getting into here? And left it with like, Oh, that was actually a pleasant conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he went really well. Yeah. He was a nice, he was a nice guy. I think. Uh, so I like Sean. Let me start by saying that I, I, I do. I liked having Sean on the show. I thought he was fun. Um, I think a lot of the things that he believes are nonsense and he's wasting a whole lot of time. And I think that he is afraid that it might be nonsense because just during our conversation with him, when we would ask him different questions about stuff and he would answer honestly, which I completely appreciate and just say, well, gosh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. Yeah. But for somebody who's leading a church, for somebody to be leading a church of his own and not have at the ready answers from atheists that, I mean, they were pretty basic innocuous questions that you would think somebody who is a fervent believer, fervent enough that they would start their own church and start leading others that they, that they have a flock of congregants and lead a church in worship would have an answer at the ready for these things. Not, and, and for some of the things it was like, he hadn't ever even considered it, which was disconcerting to me. It was a little disturbing that somebody could have such a glaring gaping hole in their epistemology for what they are doing with the rest of their life (laughs) that, you know, somebody could drive a truck through it and then for them to just go, I guess I never really thought about that. That's a good question. I'll have to get back to you. And so I think, I think people who are like that, it's, Maybe if they haven't even recognized it consciously, but they have this gnawing and nagging fear in their minds, similar to me having this nagging fear of people's reactions to hearing that I am an atheist, but they have this fear in their mind that if they stop and start honestly examining the things that they believe and the religion that they've been taught their entire lives and that are sometimes that they're teaching to other people that they're afraid they'll lose it. And so they back away from it. They recoil in fear from their, from the questions that they have in their own minds. And they're taught to do that in large part through their religious upbringing that, I mean, the LDS church has come right out and said it, you know, doubt your doubts before you doubt your faith. Yeah. Which, it, that's that's just a whole new level of dogmatism that I will never be able to fully understand or appreciate because it's so far out of my sense of self and my core being of always question everything, you know, me, mm-hmm. other authorities. Like, you should always ask questions. There should be nothing that is hidden from you, from people in power, that affects your life. And so if they're teaching you something that you don't understand, they should have adequate answers for you. And if they don't, you should go elsewhere. Yeah. 
but that's my and, that's my two cents. <laughs> yeah, well, and I think kind of uh, going back on a previous question, like what would we like to do more? I, I I would like us to be able to do more if we can get more people on to have an honest conversation with people that are religious. Mm-hmm. Like not they don't have to be a leader of a religious group, but just people like, hey, you're a devout, whatever you have been your whole life. Let's have an honest conversation. Mm-hmm. And I mean honest conversation. Mm-hmm. Well, and we've had other people who have come on the show who are definitely religious people. Um, there we had Reverend Connie Anist uh, yeah. on the show years and years ago, uh, because aside from being a reverend, she was also was it the president the of the transgender community of T of Utah. Yeah, the transgender yeah. education. Associates with or transgender education, something. But yeah, it's T of now Utah, and yeah, I can't remember what it stands for. I'm sorry, everybody. Um, but yeah, she's come on the show. She's been a longtime friend of mine. Um, I yes, believe it or not, have a lot of religious friends, and yes, they know that I'm an atheist, and most of them are perfectly fine with that because they are comfortable in their beliefs, even though they may not have what I personally view to be good reasons to have the, the beliefs or the faith that they do have. Um, but we also stand on the same side of social subjects. Right. Yeah. And we, and she wasn't so on we, the show. We for might us to divide grow. on the religion side, but when it comes to social issues, we're on the same side. So that's why we're able to have those conversations about those social issues. Right. Right. Yeah. We, she wasn't on the show for us to grill her about her religious belief. She was on the show to educate us about how we can be better allies and advocates for the transgender community um, or for the trans community. And so, yeah, I, I can work with religious people on a lot of different things where our views align, but I of course would never work with a religious person to indoctrinate anybody else with the same religious beliefs as whatever religious person. Like I'm, I would gladly work with them to do something to help humanity, but not to indoctrinate anybody. Yeah. So yes, that's a good answer. Well, thanks man. I'm sure you do the same thing. Like you work with religious people quite a bit. Yeah. And I mean, we align on, like, actually, this last, this week at work, one of the guys I work with is uber conservative, uber conservative. But we were talking politics and things that we both find equally wrong in society. And I even brought, at one point, brought up, I'm like, I said to him, I'm like, you probably don't agree at all with Bernie Sanders. But, and he stopped and goes, no. He goes, I do agree with Bernie Sanders on a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? Such as go on. Well, the the subject I was bringing up was like you know uh, taxing Wall Street mm-hmm. and saying how they can move money around all over the place without being taxed on it. But if you want to invest money, you got to pay money to invest that money, mm-hmm. and they don't. I'm like, it's bullshit. Why do they have to live by a certain set of rules and you don't? He goes, 100 percent agree. Yeah. He was just where it was going more towards the socialist side of stuff. Uh-huh. Like he didn't agree with the education and everything like that. But he goes a lot of stuff. He goes, he goes. I he actually said he goes, I would have voted for Bernie if Bernie would have gotten the nomination in 2016. He's like, I would have voted for him, hmm. but he didn't. Hmm. So he voted for Trump. <laughs> Interesting. Which I don't. Trump voters are a whole other breed, man. Like, I just don't fucking get it. Well, for him, he absolutely hated Hillary Clinton. He looks at Hillary Clinton as being, it's another it's another Bush. It's just a part of a long lineage of people becoming presidents in this country, and he didn't want that. It's a dynasty, but, yeah. A dynasty, but to him, Bernie didn't represent that. Bernie didn't represent a dynasty of of presidents. So that's why he would have voted for him. But Hillary, like, no, he absolutely fucking hates Hillary. <laughs> I, see, I hear that from so many people. Like, they just fucking hate Hillary Clinton. Yeah. And when I ask them why, they don't really have any good reasons. Or I've never heard anybody able to articulate any good reason for me. Like, I, I'll ask I, them, well, why do you hate her so much? I, I think some people view her as part of, like, the oligarchy. Yeah. And don't want that. 
but it's kind of like like Trump is also kind of part of that because he's always been a big time investor in that side of stuff, like politically. Yeah. Yeah. Even though he was used to be a Democrat. <laughs> it's always seemed a little bizarre to me when I when I hear people who just have this frothing hatred for Hillary Clinton and when I ask why, like I said, they're just they're never able to articulate a good reason. It's just because she's a Clinton and she just figured it was going to be handed to her. And I think it boils down to, she's an uppity woman in most cases. Like that's not what they'll say, but that's what it is. Yeah. And I think the reason why the guy I work with that was on the side of Bernie being that he's a very conservative person, not Bernie, but him himself. He's like, he liked the fact that Bernie was going to try to get in there and take away the, the loopholes that people take advantage of, you know, mm-hmm. try to hand it to big businesses that are raping this country. Mm. Like he was all for that, like more accountability for them. Mm. It's all for it. Well, uh, yep. I get that. I guess just, yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Politics is weird, man. Uh, I just don't understand some people and yeah, People, people seem to have this, I don't know, man. It's, it's like a, it's, it's like a lizard brain fear reaction to ever being wrong about anything. Um, somebody who I respect and admire quite a bit for a lot of the work that they've done recently, uh, created a Facebook post where they were exploring and talking about how they have this visceral reaction about when they're wrong about something and that they hate to be wrong and that they hate when people point out when they're wrong about stuff. And I just, I don't relate to that at all. I don't understand it because when I, when I'm wrong about something and and somebody points out and corrects me when I'm wrong about something, like I've learned learned something. something. Yeah. I've learned something. I'm a better person than I was five minutes ago. I'm smarter. (laughs) <laughs> like you've taught me and, and I thank them and I appreciate that they pointed out to me because I'm smarter than I was before. Everybody that I interact with from that point forward will be better off for me having been corrected in my thinking about something that was wrong because I won't be passing on that wrong information to other people. Yeah, I won't be walking around with wrong with that bit of wrong information in my head that may color my perception of other things. Like I really appreciate when people point out that I've said or done something wrong because it makes me a better person and it makes the world a better place through all of my future interactions with other people where I'm not going to be carrying around this baggage of bad information. And so it's bizarre to me when people get really upset when you correct them or when you point out that they're wrong about something and they get like really mad about it or just irritated. You know, there are several people that I've learned that if they mispronounce something, I need to not say anything about it. And then I feel bad when they say it the wrong way again in front of other people, because then the other people look and and then they start making fun of them for saying it that way. And I'm like, well, you know, I, I tried mentioning this before and you were not very happy about it. And so I've not, mentioned it it's like if i have my zipper down i want somebody to to point it out to me (laughs) as soon as possible so that i don't walk around with my zipper down all day i i used to feel make try to make people feel bad about correcting me sometimes oh yeah like like if they corrected that we're we're correcting i wrote something or something it'd be like thank you for pointing out my learning disability (laughs) oh and i want i so just so you know i'm not at all talking about you here because (laughs) no 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 it would be just like people because well i did grow up with class i just having a learning disability yeah and i was put into special classes so i think it's funny when i can be like yeah i know i fucked up there but let's have fun with it (laughs) (laughs) yeah but there's just there's some people who just i don't know they they don't like and can't handle being wrong. And I, it just, that's so far out of my frame of reference and experience that I don't know how to relate. Like I don't, I don't understand it at all. It's just one of those things that people can tell me that they experience. And I have no frame of reference there because it just doesn't, it doesn't compute. Like I don't understand why they would be upset, but. Well, and for me, someone can't just go, well, you're wrong. I got to know 
why am I wrong? Oh yeah, show me show me how I'm wrong. Like show, don't yeah, just how am I wrong? Yeah, you can't you, just you can demonstrate the how and the why. I'm like, oh, now I see it. Right. Yeah, you can't just tell me I'm wrong. I need to know, you know, how I'm wrong. I, yeah. I need to have better information other than just you're wrong. Well, that doesn't help me because you've not told me what is correct. You've just told me that I'm wrong. It's it's kind of like I when I'm going through stuff, like even with firefighting, you can't just tell me to do something. I need to know why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because if I know why I'm doing a certain thing, it makes more sense. I'm like, oh, I'm doing this because it interacts with this and this, which causes this to happen. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes I can be wrong about thinking I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll think through it. I'm like, well, isn't that right? And I'm like, no, because this, this, and this. Like, oh, now I get it. Oh, right, right, right. Now I see. Yeah. Which I also like. Yeah. But, uh, so we've, we've gone quite a bit over. I think this will clock in at probably close to an hour and a half or more of show. More, well, I think. Congratulations, listeners. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> before we go, I want to make sure that we thank our Patreon supporters. And first, well, first, thank you all very much for sending in the questions that you did. I really appreciate that. It was awesome. Um, yeah. And feel free to send us in questions anytime. We're, we're happy to answer them. I just thought it would be kind of fun to do like a Q&A for this particular episode since it was 300. Um, but so thank you all very much for your participation. I appreciate it very much. And thank all of these Patreon subscribers. That would be two skeptical chaps. Alan Firth. Don't be a Richard. Atheist. John McCullough. Christy Kalbach. Let them eat Kafefi. Ali Olson. Stephen Andrus. Tiffany Hudson. Who, we did have on the show. Who, yeah, who sent yes. us a message to remind us that, yes, indeed, she has been on the show. And after she said, after, after we recorded even, I was like, oh, no, I'm pretty sure that we've had Tiffany on the show before. Yeah. Yes, I do remember <laughs> that. Uh, let's see. You said uh, Vanessa. Andrew bought a pitch. Jeff Peterson. Jeremy Goodson. Megan Mitchell. Utah Outcast. Wesley Aaron. Captain Samples. Corey Ebert. Freethinker215. Janet Uter. Nico Gonzalez. Purple Dragon. Savita Kuna. Taylor Grin. Tim Jacobson. Uter Zorker wants you to support... Oh, let me start that again. Uter Zorker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, third time's a charm. Uter Zorker wants you to please support the International Association of Atheists. Mine must not have updated. That's not what my screen says. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, it has not. Yeah, it has not updated because that's that's the current information out on Patreon that I pulled just before we started recording. Uh, so all thank right. you all very very much for for participating, for being Patreon supporters, for listening to the show, for being fans. We love you all. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. And so until next time, I would say crucify people who don't like being wrong, but they might, you know, want to crucify you for pointing out that they're wrong. So, you know, use your own judgment. And you should leave us a review and wear a fucking mask. Cause if you don't, Taylor Grant can't come home. <laughs> And fucking vote, people. Fucking vote. Thank you all very much. It's coming up. <laughs> We're out. Where are we going? A lot of people are saying it's really good. <laughs>